G'day. F1 is heading back to China for the first time in five years. I must admit, uh, the last time I was there in 2019, it wasn't my favourite track, but maybe this year, with Zhou Guan Yu on board and a local hero, things will be markedly different. Let's hope so. Let's talk first about the Shanghai circuit. It's about a 45 minute drive from the centre of the city. What's it like in that area? Uh, a little bit industrial and not that much of character anywhere near the track. Although I do remember a nice shopping area about three stops from the track on the train line. It is serviced by a train line and, and a word of warning if you are going to this race, you can't drive your car unless you have a pass anywhere near the track. They cordoned the whole area off to cars but you're okay to walk. This was a track that was finished in 2004. It's built by Herman Tilke, who builds most of the F1 circuits, and it cost about 240 million US dollars. Now, a lot of the drivers say they love the track, and certainly the first turn is unlike anything we see anywhere else in the world. And what makes this first turn interesting is that there are so many different lines that the drivers can take. The actual pitch straight is quite breathtaking when you look at it. Those two overpasses are fantastic. Now, the media center is one of the best that we have on the tour. Uh, it's actually at the top of one of those towers and it requires an elevator trip up. Are the stands full on race day? I'm afraid not. And if you go on, say, the first practice day on Friday, the stands coming up to the hairpin have hardly anybody in there. And photography-wise, that doesn't make for a great shot. In past years, they've struggled to sell tickets to this event, and so much so that uh, the stands at the far end of the track have signage on them promoting giarding and anting, which is the area that uh, this track is located in. I'm keen to see whether this year that signage comes off because Joe's had such a huge impact that uh, we have a lot more spectators wanting to watch him. The weather at that time of year is typically cool, not cold, and we often get a lot of grey days, although I can tell you that we did have blue skies on race day for 2018. Photography-wise, there are some nice shots. I particularly like the entrance to Pit Lane where you see all these buildings in the background. The head-on shot from turn one is lovely. There are also some nice shots of that pit building and grandstand from the exit of Turn 1. Now, having not been there for five years, I had to really struggle to think what my experience was like. And the thing that stood out the last time I was there was the size of the paddock. It is absolutely monstrous. It's bigger by a huge margin than any other paddock we go to. And to be quite honest, it's a little soulless. In 2019, the Chinese Grand Prix was the 1,000th race. So we had a little bit of signage on there. This year, though, I'm hoping they do a little bit more with it and uh, inject some personality. Uh, if you have a look at this shot, you're probably thinking, where are the hospitality suites? Well, they are buried inside these beautiful gardens and they sit above these little ponds. What that means for drivers is there is a very long walk from their hospitality suite to their garage, typically. Certainly the longest walk that we have at any track. Let's talk about the fans, and we do see a few of them roll up for the driver's interaction on a Thursday. And my memory was that the police were very officious in keeping the crowds back, and quite frankly, they're only three or four deep, so it's not like a huge Monza crush. And there is a big police presence at the track. But good news, this is an extremely inexpensive race to get a ticket to. You could stand here in the general admission area at Turn 1 for 66 US dollars or thereabouts, and that covers your full three days. But if you're looking for a grandstand seat, I think uh, pit straight, you can't go wrong there. And also, at the end of the long straight before they turn right at the hairpin, there's a lot of heavy braking goes on there, and certainly you would see some action during the race if you sat in that particular section. And there's seats on both sides of that track, entry and exit. Closer to the track, there are a number of four and five star hotels which have beautifully large rooms. This is the complete opposite to Japan, where you've got very small rooms and uh, at best three star hotels close to the track. Price wise, uh, pretty reasonable if you get in early, although the teams seem to book out most of the really good hotels. But there's a Hyatt, a Sheraton and many others for you to choose from. What about driving? Uh, well, you'll probably be taking taxis if you're going to be using roads, because unless you have a Chinese license or you're happy to sit a test, you cannot hire a car in that country. I found taxis to be readily available, but you must make sure that they turn the meter on. I was caught once before. Food-wise, what is Chinese food like? Well, it's certainly different to the Chinese food that I've eaten in Australia, but I did find some great restaurants, particularly in the city. 
not so much out at the hotels because it's pretty basic sort of fare, but you can get Western meals at the five-star hotels near the track. If you're staying in the center of Shanghai, the Bund is quite amazing, particularly at night. Throngs of people, amazing lighting. Oh, and if you're heading out to a bar, make sure it's a reputable one. My brother-in-law got caught once going into a bar and racking up a monstrous bill he had no idea about and having the security guys escort him to a teller machine to get the several thousands of dollars he was required to pay. Let's go back to 2019, the last time we raced in Shanghai. I remember Daniel Ricciardo, or Avocado as he was known, was very popular. I remember taking these shots of Valtteri Bottas. I was actually lying on the ground and Valtteri walked straight over me with a wry grin on his face. That year we had Pierre Gasly racing for Red Bull. Daniel Ricciardo and Nico Hülkenberg were racing in Alpine. Antonio Giovinazzi partnered Kimi Raikkonen at Alfa Romeo. Alex Albon and Daniil Kvyat were at Toro Rosso. Roman Grosjean, who now races IndyCar, and Kevin Magnussen were at Haas. And it was the first year of Car Lando at McLaren. Williams-wise, we had George Russell and Robert Kubica racing. And it was the first year that Charles raced for Ferrari alongside Sebastian Vettel. And don't these cars look so much different now? Earlier on, I mentioned a couple of nice shots. I neglected to tell you about these stock standard shots where the water gathers on top of these tire barriers and allows us a reflection shot. And sometimes if there's been no rain, yeah, we take our own water bottles out and fill them up. If you go back a year prior, 2018, I got one of the best photos of Daniel Ricciardo's Park Ferme celebrations. After he pulled off a win, yes, we saw a shoey on the podium, and then he spent some time entertaining us media down in pit lane after the event. Now, one thing I can say with confidence is that you're not watching this video in China. Why am I so confident? Well, YouTube is not available in that country, which is a shame because the market is huge and the opportunity for growth in the sport is huge. My first year shooting at the Chinese Grand Prix was in 2017. It was memorable because FP1 was compromised a couple of times with red flags and then FP2 was completely cancelled because the medical helicopter couldn't land at the hospital, which was some 38 kilometres away. And while the visibility was fine at the track, it wasn't the case at the hospital. Having shot three Chinese Grand Prix, I would give it a D, primarily because of the grey skies, lack of atmosphere and low fan turnout. But I am really hoping that I can bump that up to a C or maybe a B in 2024. Now, did you enjoy this video? If you said yes, please hit the like button and uh, a lot of you, I'm thinking 50% haven't subscribed, here's your chance to do it. And if you have a look here at all these different options, you'll find content, merchandise and a whole lot of information about Formula One. Xie Xie for watching and... G'day, we're heading... G'day, F1... G'day.